Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is use hybrid modeling to complete this part using 1CNC Mill Expert. To begin with, why don't we use surfaces to create both of these bosses? So, what we're going to do is this let me zoom in and let's head over to the Command Manager, select our surfaces option, and the first surface we're going to take a look at is cross sectional. Now, cross sectional creates a surface using cross sections and you're going to need a minimum of two cross sections to create a surface. Let me show you how it works. We're going to take our cursor, I'm going to left click the line, and now you're faced with a couple of arrows. These arrows determine the direction of selection. I'm going to left click, and when I'm done selecting the line, I can right click. Now it's time to select the next cross section. We're going to repeat exactly the same process. I'm going to left click the line, left click the direction, I'm done selecting the line so I can right click. Now when I'm done selecting all of the cross sections, I can right click one more time and one CNC will create the surface. Very nice. Now let me demonstrate this a few more times for you. Alright, so let's go back into our cross sectional tool. I'm going to left click the arc, left click the direction of selection, and right click. Left click the arc, left click the direction of selection, right click. I'm done selecting all the cross sections so I can right click one more time. Let's speed that up a little bit. We're going to left click, left click the direction, right click. Left click, left click the direction, right click, and right click. Let's complete that one more time. I'm going to zoom the drawing just a little bit, pan over. We're going to left click, left click the direction, and right click. Left click, left click the direction, and right click. And when we're done selecting all of the geometry, we're going to right click one more time. Awesome. So you can see there is the boss created by cross sections. Now I'm going to undo this. There's something important to point out. Let's hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, and Control Z to undo all of that. When creating cross sectional surfaces, it's important that you always use the same direction of selection. Let me explain. Let's go back into our cross section tool. I'm going to left click the line and I'm going to left click the direction. Now I'm going to right click. Now for this next cross section, I'm going to left click and instead of selecting the same direction of selection, I'm going to select the exact opposite direction. I'm going to left click that. And when I'm done, I'm going to right click. And when I right click again, you're going to notice that the surface is twisted. That's because 1CNC is using the direction that we selected for both of those lines to create the surface. So it's important to always use the same direction. Left click, left click the direction, right click, left click, left click the same direction, right click, and right click. All right, now there's another way to create cross-sectional surfaces, and that's by selecting groups or chains of geometry. Let me demonstrate how to do this. We're going to head back over to our cross-sectional tool. We're going to left click, left click the direction. Now to select the rest of the geometry in this boundary or in this shape, we can simply hit the F3 key in the keyboard to select the rest of the geometry. Now it's time to select the next cross section. It's important that you select the same corresponding geometry. I don't want to select this line here. I want to select this line because that's exactly what we chose down here. I'm going to select that line. Make sure you select the same direction. Hit the F3 on the keyboard and when you're done, right hand mouse click and 1CNC creates the cross sectional geometry. It's very fast. Something also to point out is there's an option called Advanced Surface Options. Let's pull that up and talk about that for just a second. When selecting multiple lines and arcs for a cross section, it's always suggested to use this option called Per Entity. And that way, when one CNC creates the cross sectional surface, it looks at each individual entity, each individual line, individual arc, and creates those surfaces as if we were creating those surfaces one at a time. That's going to give you a much more defined cross-sectional surface when selecting groups of geometry. Alright, so we have it set to per entity and that's perfect. We'll click OK to that. 
Let's repeat the same process on this other boss. We're going to go back into our cross-sectional tool, take our cursor, left click, left click the direction, hit the F3 key on the keyboard to select the rest of the geometry. Left click, left click the direction, hit the F3 key on the keyboard, right click, and one CNC creates the surface. Very nice. All right, now the next type of surface we're going to take a look at is called surface from curves. Now, to create a surface from curves, you need a closed boundary. And we're going to be using these closed ovals that we created earlier in our last video. So here's how it works. We're going to go back into our surfaces tool. We're going to select the option called surface from curves. We're going to take our cursor and we can left click anywhere on this closed boundary at the very top. I'm just going to left click and when I'm done, I can right hand mouse click and one CNC creates that surface. Very, very fast. Let's do that again. We're going to go back into our surface from curves, take our cursor anywhere on this closed boundary at the top, left click, and when we're done, we can right hand mouse click. All right, so now we've got our surfaces created for both of the bosses. Now, that's really all the surfaces we need for this shape. Let's start now to create our solid model. Let's head back over to the command manager and let's go into our extrude tools. From here, we're going to use extrude curves. Now, extrude curves also needs a completely closed boundary and we're going to be using this boundary right here. I'm going to left click and when I'm done, I can right hand mouse click. At this point, I can take my cursor and move it up or down to create the extruded solid model. You can also come over here to the left and type in a value. Now our part needs an extrusion of minus 250 thousandths. I can actually grid point snap that just by pulling my cursor down and I can wait till height says minus 250 thousandths and then left click just like that. And when we're finished, we can right hand mouse click. All right, so what we have now is we have one solid model and we have surfaces to create our part. At this point, what we want to do is we want to merge all of that geometry into one shape. And the reason why we want to do that is we want to create fillets at the base of these bosses. And until we connect the surfaces to the solid model, we're not going to be able to do that. So to join everything together, to merge all of our geometry, we first need to select it. We can easily do that by hitting Control A, Control Alpha on the keyboard. Now it's okay that the wireframe geometry was selected as well. One CNC will ignore that. Let's head back over to the command manager. We're going to go inside of our model operations and we're going to use this option called merge. So let's left click that. And one CNC confirms that the merge was successful and we have a watertight solid model. So we'll click OK to that. Now before we create the fillets, it's important to note something. Remember when we created our solid model, how we have a top face and we have a bottom face? Well, this top face is still underneath these bosses. We need to get rid of those inner top faces that are still there at the base of each one of these bosses. That's also very simple to do. Just head back over to the command manager and use this option called remove inner surfaces. That's going to get rid of any unnecessary surfaces. So we're going to left click, take our cursor, left click, and when we're done, we can right hand mouse click. Now, to verify that everything is exactly the way we want it, we can head back over to the lower right hand corner and select our verify tools. From there, we're going to select this option called retrieve information about a solid model. Once we do that, if we hover over the solid model, we'll notice that over here within the Verify browser, it says that a selected object is a solid model and most importantly, there's only one region. Region one means that we have the type of solid model that we're gonna need for further construction. All right, let's put these fillets in at the very base of the bosses. This is also very simple to do. We're gonna head back over to the Command Manager and we're going to select our model tools. From there, we're going to select Fillet, and within the Fillet dialog box, we're going to make sure that we have Standard Fillet selected, and for the Fillet radius, this is going to be 125 thousandths. I'm going to type in 0.125, 
We'll click OK. And now I can left click the base of both bosses. And when I'm done, I can right hand mouse click and one CNC will generate the fillets. All right, those fillets look great. Now let's take a look at creating the holes. For that, we're going to use the extrude cut command. Let's head back over to the command manager, head into our extrude tools, and from there, we're going to use extrude cut. All we need to do is take our cursor, highlight over the shape that we'd like to cut, left click, and then simply pull that down all the way through the model. When we're done, we can left click. I'm going to repeat the exact same process on this hole, left click, drag it down, and left click. Left click, drag through, and left click. Left click, drag down, and left click. It's very, very simple. Left click, drag all the way down, and left click. Left click, drag all the way down, and left click. We're going to do the same for this hole as well. We're going to left click, drag it all the way down, and left click. Very good. Now we're going to use the same command to create the counter bores. Now these counter bores on top of the bosses, they're actually minus 250 thousandths. So we can use our extrude cut command and down here where it says depth, we can type in minus 250 thousandths. From there we can take our cursor, left click on the circle, and then when we're done, left click one more time left click and left click, left click and left click, left click and left click. Now the counter bores at the top of the part, these are only minus 125 thousandths. So we'll come back over to depth and let's type in minus 125 thousandths. That looks good. So we're going to left click and left click, left click and left click. And now we'll use the same exact command to create this circular pocket at minus 150 thousandths. So over here back in depth, we're going to type in minus 0.15. When we're done, we can take our cursor and left click and then left click one more time. And when we're finished, we can right hand mouse click. Very good. So as we rotate the model around, everything is looking great. Now the next thing we want to do is create this five degree taper. Let's do that next. So the very first thing we need to do is create a construction plane on this face right here. To do that, we're going to head down to the lower left hand corner, select our construction plane tools, and we're going to be using this option that's third from the left. It's called create plane from surface. All we need to do is take our cursor and left click right on that surface and one CNC will create that construction plane. Now, if we want to, we can change our view so we're looking perpendicular to that plane. Just hit the space bar on the keyboard, and from there, select the option called Plane. That's going to rotate the view so we're looking perpendicular down on that brand new construction plane. All right, let's create a reference line that's at five degrees. I'm going to use the Line tool. From there, I'm just going to come anywhere and left click, and then over here, where it says line angle, I'm going to type in 5 degrees. And from here, you can see we're locked in at 5 degrees. I'm just going to left click right about there. The length really doesn't matter at this moment. Let's rotate the view just a little bit. I'm going to zoom in. And let's select that line we just created. I'm going to hit the letter S on the keyboard and left click. Now I'm going to use the Move tool. I'm going to grab that line right by the end point and I'm going to snap it to the end of that reference line we created earlier. And when I'm done, I can right hand mouse click. Again, let's hit the space bar and we're going to use the same option. We're going to select plane. That'll rotate our view so we're normal to the construction plane. And that five degree line we created, we're going to use that to help cut that five degree taper into the solid model. Let's create some other geometry to help us with this. I'm going to go back into the line tool and all I'm doing is I'm just grid point snapping a horizontal line, something like that. Then I'll come down and snap a vertical line and right click. And all we're going to do is we're going to use these three lines as a shape to cut into our solid model. Let's trim this up first. I'm going to hit control T on the keyboard. That's the shortcut for trim two. I'm going to left click and left click, left click and left click. 
And there we go. There's the shape we can use to cut into our solid model. Let's rotate our view just a little bit so we can see exactly what's happening here. Let's head back over to the Command Manager, select our Extrude Tools, and then Extrude Cut. From there, I'm going to left-click that shape we created, drag it all the way past the solid model and left-click, and one CNC has successfully created that 5-degree taper. Now, we no longer need the wireframe geometry, so let's do a couple things. Let's go back to our default XY plane. We can shut down our construction plane tools. We no longer need the wireframe geometry, so let's select by color. Let's head up here, select by color. Let's select all the blue geometry. Click OK, and then click the delete key on the keyboard. Very good. Now, the last thing we need to do is create the chamfers. To do this, let's head back over to the Command Manager. We're going to select our Model Tools. We'll select Fill It. Now we're going to select the Chamfer option, and the chamfer distance is 20 thousandths. So I'll type in 0 0.02, and then we'll click OK. All I need to do now is left-click on the edges where I'd like to create the 20 thousandths chamfer. Left-click left click. We can do the same here on these edges as well and then right click and let one CNC create the chamfers. And there we go. We have successfully created our part using one CNC hybrid modeling. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.